Hello everyone, it is I, Mark Major, and I'm here at the Action Figure Atorium. You can kind of see it there behind me. Now, a few weeks ago, I did an episode of a Let's Build where I produced this um, cool sort of uh, 124th scale model kit of a uh, sort of uh, sh shark man in a um, cool sort of mech suit kind of thing, and it was fun to build. Um, but the colors they give you for it were a little fruity, and I thought, wouldn't it be great if we went back to this thing, we took it apart, which is something I said you shouldn't do, but I just wanted to build it on camera first to show people what it looks like. But take it apart and give it a paint scheme and see if we can turn it into something different. Now, for this, um, I have used a series of uh, paints that are all metal finishes, like golds, coppers, bronze, irons, that kind of thing. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you the paints I used, the pieces they went on to, and then we're gonna put it back together and we're gonna see if I have created what I call the world's worst paint job. So everybody here for this World of Wheels event in an arena of evil, strap on the leather, people, and hold on tight. All right, let's switch over to our uh, desktop view. And um, let me go ahead and uh, let me um, sh remove me from the screen for a second here. Okay, so here's the paints that we are using for this. There is the Rust-Oleum Metallic, which went on sort of the kind of um, more mechanical pieces that make up the uh, Deep Sea Ripper. Um, then all the sort of light blue pieces I did with this bare copper gloss, which is a really good choice because if you go kind of thin or you miss some spots, you get actually a little bit of the blue poking through, which makes it look very sort of like a, uh, a bronze statue that's turning blue, i.e. the Statue of Liberty. Um, then for the dark blue, uh, parts, which are mainly kind of the shell of the beast. I use this Krylon um, hammered iron. This is one of my favorite paints. I use this on a Gundam and I absolutely love it. I plan on buying more of it. Uh, next up was the orange pieces, which are mainly kind of the, um, the boosters that this thing wears on its back. And I did that with this um, oil rubbed bronze, it's called. Now this came out really kind of dark almost kind of black, kind of a disappointment, but I happen to have this can with a little bit of paint left in it, and I thought we would use it. All right, now all the uh, next pieces there, I originally did in this gunmetal gray with the war paints, and it looked too close to the silver. It wasn't different enough. It, it kind of merged with it. So uh, we didn't have any gold, and I absolutely love the War Paints metallic gold that they have, and so I did it, did these pieces in the gold, and I really love this gold. Now it takes a couple coats to get stuff on, but it looks really good, and it looks especially good when you go over an existing uh, layer of, uh, of the, the gunmetal gray or silver there. And then last were the white pieces, okay? There are just a very few of them. They're just kind of like a tip here and there or like a little embellishment on the beast on his uh, sort of mech suit there. And originally I started off with that can of America's finest aluminum, but it looked exactly, and when I say exact, I mean 100% like the Rust-Oleum Metallic. And what I realized is that they are in fact the same paint, America's Finest there is actually by Rust-Oleum. Uh, the difference is the can and the marketing behind it. The can on the left, you can get at a Michaels or a Hobby Lobby and it's got that fancy uh, shiny cap, which by the way, the paint does not look like that, but it's got the fancy cap and it's got the specific type of, uh, of label on it, right, for art stores. And the other can is super generic. All the paints come in the same can and it's a little uh, sticker they put on the back that tells you what color it is. So if you're looking for the high-end Rust-Oleum metallic paints, 
you might actually look for America's Finest Aluminum as it is the same paint. So after I painted it, I realized it was the same color as the silver all the way on the left. And then I took out this weird goopy textured gold that I had bought a few years ago, um, which I don't understand this painted uh, paint. It's like a paste or like a stucco. It's textured. It's really goopy. And I tried that at first and I, I didn't like it and I already have a gold. So I took out my war paints, uh, true metallic copper which I love. It's one of my favorites and uh, it's great. It's shiny and it looks totally different than all the other paints. So these are our pieces. We are going to, um, we are going to put them back together now and see exactly what the deep sea ripper looks like. And here it is fully, fully formed. And I have the hammerhead um, head on him now. I think it turned out pretty well, especially like uh, using all those sort of like claw pieces, uh, you know, the claws for the feet and the hands and stuff like that, and all those little ornamental pieces in gold, I think was the right move. I think doing all the mechanical pieces in silver is really good. I think doing the main shell and that iron looks really good. Uh, the oil rubbed bronze is probably my least favorite, but it is different and the gold uh, looks really good against it. It's uh, it just kind of turned out sort of a winner and um, and you can see the uh, the bare copper there on his torpedo gun especially looks really cool with the metallic copper. Um, uh, against it now. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just swap out the heads. Let you guys have kind of a better close-up of this dog. And I also did, um, you know, I did the little floating landmine thing. I did that in copper. I uh, just thought it was the right thing to do. It was actually a different, it was a, a darker color. It should have been sort of, I believe, the, br the oil rub bronze, but I think the metallic copper is a better choice. But if we uh, speed this video up here to, uh, to where I, the other shark head comes in. Yeah, so maybe you guys like them better like that. Now, there were three blanks they give you with this, and I was going to paint the blanks as well, and that might be the next thing is just as an alternative cool head is to, um, is to have maybe a copper or bronze combo head on this guy. But also, if the whole suit is kind of mechano, maybe the shark needs to be real that's poking out of it. So, uh, that is the painting of the Deep Sea Ripper. And uh, I think it actually ended up pretty good and not the world's worst paint job. In fact, this might be something that we revisit in a Gundam. Maybe we need to make an all sort of metals Gundam. Now, there is also this piece that came with it, which I wish they would not have... Um, bothered making and giving this I, and instead just took the price of the model kit down. This is kind of dumb. The, it's like a diorama piece where the figure's supposed to sit in there and it's got kind of a, a port like it's, you know, like it's nautical and it's got some fans on the top. Um, but this is sort of a lemon in my opinion. This doesn't really do anything. It doesn't look particularly good, but maybe this should get a paint job or maybe I should just put this piece on eBay and see if somebody else wants it for their collection because this might be cool to somebody. Um, might look cool with a smaller figure too. Maybe like mini mates um, look good in this. In which case, yeah, we want to paint this. And if I do paint it, maybe I sell it as a painting. So that's it for this episode of the Action Figuratorium. Just kind of a let's have fun with different paints episode, seeing what you can do. Um, if you are interested in any of these um, these model kits, here, let's cut back over. To, uh, desktop. You can find them at Bomb Busby, which is where I got mine. There's a, a quite a selection of number 57 kits available. You might be into the one I got, the Deep Sea Ripper, or maybe you're into this guy, Wander Soul. It's like a little, um, looks like a little goldfish or a koi fish in uh, piloting a, a little mech suit, or uh, maybe this guy, the panda dude, a panda guy in the mech suit. And probably one of the more popular ones is the Grave Frog, which you cannot get from uh, Bomb Busby anymore, but you can find it at the Big Bad Toy Store. Do you remember those guys? You remember them? 
Yeah, but they're uh, thirty ninety nine and uh, not twelve ninety nine or uh, twenty two ninety nine like here, but you can still get it. And if that's what life is all about, um, just being able to get things, well, then give it a shot. So thanks to everybody who made it this far in the video, and uh, as always, people, stay charged. <laughs>